Mark Osfeldt from ADM Investor Services International with some thoughts this week on emerging market currencies. Above all, um, many of them are commodity producers and therefore should be benefiting from the commodity price rally. Um, I think there's a general point, and I'm going to start off with actually one which is a big commodity importer and very reliant above all on oil, and that's the Turkish lira. Um, that obviously has had a roller coaster ride over the past year, um, suffering enormously uh, when the credibility of the central bank was put under pressure, when they put in a new central bank governor back in um, September time, um, who implemented some credible policies, and we had a, an ostensible vault fast from Erdogan, uh, so it appreciated. And then as soon as that central bank governor was fired, and it seemed to be going back to the bad old ways of political appointees, uh, so the Turkish lira has gapped wider. And no amount of high interest rates, base rate in Turkey is 19%, 10-year yields are at 17.9%, uh, uh, can basically support this if you've got bad policies. So let's move elsewhere. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, move to Russia. Uh, the Russian ruble, um, interesting rates have been hiked up here, up to 5%, uh, 10-year yields around uh, about 7.1%. So a relatively shallow curve, but still one which is attractive when one thinks relative to what's on offer elsewhere. Um, and despite all the headwinds from sanctions, it's actually been quite well supported overall. Um, it's uh, well contained within a range. Um, and as much as uh, it's clearly getting support from oil prices, um, <clears throat> it does seem to be under, uh, underpinned above all by those high interest rates and available elsewhere. So let's move to South America. Um, the first one I'm going to start with is the Brazilian real. Obviously, oil and uh, above all agricultural exports are very important here. Uh, they cut rates down to 2% here and have now had to, with raging inflation, um, <clears throat> particularly PPI is around about the 30 odd percent mark. Um, they've had to start to reverse that very sharply, and that's starting to give some support for the currency. Um, but I think it will have to, we'll have to see a lot more than the three and a half we've got. Markets are pricing in five and a half, um, and the 10 year yield also suggests there's going to be a lot more at 9.4. Um, and then we come to two of the co two copper producers. Um, uh, first of all, starting with Chile, uh, as one can see, uh, took a big hit like all the other currencies, um, but re has recovered sharply and obviously with a rising copper price, doing very well, not had to really make any adjustments to interest rates and with 10 year yields only at three and a half percent. This is clearly a proper commodity story and a proper support. Um, contrast that with Peru. Uh, the next chart is a Peruvian sol, uh, which is basically making new all-time lows versus the dollar and coming under pressure because people are fearful of a leftist government being voted in um, <clears throat> with a new president, um, Mr. Castillo, um, and uh, clearly uh, not getting any support from interest rates either with base, base rate around 0.25 and 10 yields at 5.4. Um, now to the, the two final ones. Um, the first one um, is the Indonesian rupiah. Um, limits on exports there sometimes basically uh, help to undermine it, um, as has the fact that it's been conducting QE, which has been unusual in terms of uh, emerging market currencies, but uh, broadly steady profile. But one suspects uh, that with um, Indonesian 10 year yields at around six and a half percent, we'll probably have to do see some sort of tightening for it to actually make much more in the way of gains. And last but not least, um, we've got the South African Rand, which I consider to be very curious because it took an enormous hit, uh, obviously struggling um, economically, uh, above all with huge unemployment, um, <clears throat> but still nevertheless seeing the uh, South African Reserve Bank managing to cut rates down to uh, three and a half percent. However, this one is, I think, a function of where 10 year yields are at 9.2 percent, a huge risk premium for all the debt that it has and a weak economy. And it really does underline uh, that as much as politics matter and commodity prices matter, 10 year yields matter also. Those are the thoughts for this week.